Hello, in this video we're going to look at the Riemann-Lebesgue theorem and that has to do with the limiting value of the coefficients of a Fourier series. Um, I'm going to start a little, I don't know if mini series is the right word, I'm going to try to create 10, or 10 to 15, 15 to 20 videos on Fourier series. Um, little short videos, hopefully not more than you know 10 minutes long. And uh, that well, this and then that's what this first one involves. So let's look at it as a reminder what a Fourier series is. We're going to let f of x be integrable on this range, negative pi to pi, and have period two pi. And that's our assumption for now. The Fourier series, the Fourier series corresponds corresponding to f is defined like this, where the coefficients a n and b n are defined as these integrals. And the coefficients, a n and b n, they're actually called the, the Fourier coefficients corresponding to our function f of x. So now, um, what the, the Riemann-Lebesgue theorem deals with is the limiting value of these coefficients. So if x has period 2 pi and integrable on this range, then the limiting value of these, uh, the for your coefficients corresponding to f of x limit to zero, right? And that's one of the, uh, it's a sufficient condition in the infinite sum to converge is that those have to limit to zero. It's not a n necessary condition, but sufficient. So let's, let's look at A, the first one here. And let's do a variable change. X is equal to u, u plus pi over n so and you can back solve for u to this dx is equal to du so take this information and plug it in and that's what we get here see even I changed the limits of integration also so negative pi negative pi and everything else is plugged in now to go from here to here it's we're purely looking at the sine function so the, what's in here is nu plus pi and so when you add pi to the angle of a sine function, um, it actually makes it go negative. So if we take out that plus pi, then we have to put a negative out front. And so that's how we go from here to here. Now, because these repeat in a period of 2 pi, and this one repeats in a period of 2 pi, then the product of these two repeat in a period of 2 pi. So to go from here to here, we just change the limits of integration. So the difference between here and here is 2 pi. But since they repeat, we could actually integrate over any range that's 2 pi. So let's just add pi over n to both of these ranges, and we get this. And now um, to go from here, well, those are the same. And so actually, I don't know why I put that. But um, here the... Uh, u is a dummy variable so we could actually stick in x here and here and then what that says is this is equal to this okay so if we take two of these so this plus itself is going to equal to this plus that and that's what I say here so we take two of the original that is equal to the original plus this, which is, is what we get here. Okay, so now why do we do that? Well, if we take this two to the other side and then take the absolute value of everything, we, we get this. Now, the absolute value of this whole integral is gonna be less than or equal to if we take the absolute values of things in between. And because the absolute value of this is less than or equal to one. You know, we can just essentially get rid of it. And so if we take this out, then this is still true. So that this is less than our absolute value of, of the inner thing, but then this is less than or equal to one, so we can get rid of it, and then we get we come up with this equation. Now, this equation, if we look at what happens in if we take the n go to infinity, okay here since f is integrable and so in any proof you do it's like how far do you go back to prove things and so 
we're gonna we're gonna assume this is a knowledgeable thing and then, and if it's not then you know put it in the comments and, I'll, and then I'll prove that too but because f is integrable it doesn't have to be bounded even it has to be Lebesgue integrable and if we let n go to infinity the integral of these two functions go to zero those go to the um, and that's what this says so now what does that mean that says that um, this here goes to zero so the limit of this goes to zero and that's what we wanted to show that the limit of this coefficient goes to zero and then to keep it on two pages I'm going to omit the proof of B but it's proved so similar to A that I'm going to omit it and, and call this video done but really you go through the same process f of x cosine of nx make a substitution and it's almost 100% identical okay well that's all I have for today hopefully you enjoyed it uh, please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one thanks bye